Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Everything is Bad New Fangled Motion Picture Show. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Everything is Bad New Fangled Motion Picture Show. I'm your host, Niall. And I'm Nolan. And today we're going to be reviewing the latest and greatest and Gareth Edwards, like, sci-fi, sort of space opera. I guess that's just more hard sci-fi. Yeah, um... You see, latest and greatest of his. If he's done other, he's done one other sci-fi movie that I know of. I didn't know who he was before he did Rogue One. So, Godzilla. Oh, so I guess he has done more than one sci-fi movie before this. Uh, anyway, we're gonna be reviewing the creator. Uh, starring one John David Washington, otherwise known as Denzel Washington's son. Yeah, but you know, he. I'm just he saying, gets there like, on his own merit. I yes, but the problem is that when you are Denzel Washington's son, everyone knows you as Denzel Washington's son. So when they talk about you, they're like, "Oh yeah, it's starring Denzel Washington's son." I guess so. Just like uh, what's his name? Scott Eastwood is also always going to be Clint Eastwood's son. Yeah, but Denzel Washington's a better actor than Scott Eastwood, though. But Scott or, uh, Eastwood, or, uh, John John David Washington is a better actor than Scott Eastwood. Scott Eastwood looks more like his father than John David Washington looks like his father. That's true. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> so we're gonna be doing a spoiler free review, and then we'll give you a spoiler warning and more in depth into it after that. And there are spoilers in this movie. Um, but I will say this, and this is part of the review. Uh, called it. There was like two two major spoilers. Uh, yeah. Right? And, uh, we c- called him. I was like, oh, I bet this is the thing. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. It was, it was So, I, I will say this movie looks amazing. Art direction in this movie is fantastic. Visual effects are really great. Um, the, like, all of the robots are just like really cool designs and honestly I, I was telling you about this it reminds me like just overall the look of this movie made me think of um crap what's his name we got his name again we we did this yesterday gosh the south african guy oh man District. hold on hold on uh hold on wait let me bring it up here um, God, I hate this. Neil Blomkamp. Yeah. Jeez. Um. Anyway, it reminds me like it looks like a Neil Blomkamp movie, um, except for the fact that it doesn't take place in Johannesburg, because the robots look like something straight out of Chappie in a lot of ways, and the space station looked like something out of uh, Elysium. Yeah. So I do. I have some nitpicky kind of stuff about the movie. Like plot wise and stuff, I can get into later. But like it, w- it was an all right movie. I did enjoy it. Um, like I said it looked great. Uh, it's pretty good, you know, time spent. But it's just like little things here and there. I go, ah, I think they could have tightened this up a little more. Um, and some of it was like the, I guess there's kind of like too much rule of cool. Which sounds strange, but like there's a point where you're like, all right, yeah, that the, looks cool, but it doesn't make any sense. There's there's <laughs> a lot of that in this to do with the U.S. military forces. Yeah, it's like, oh, that looks cool. It makes no sense. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. There was one thought we had that we thought at some point, um, perhaps this was intended to be UN forces or like co- UN coalition forces or something instead of just US military. Well, considering everyone's wearing blue and white. Yeah, like there, there was just stuff in there that I was like, this doesn't feel like something the US military would do 50 years from now because it's not that far in the future. That's my other issue is it's not far enough in the future. There's no way they have this level of technology in my lifetime. There's no way, there's no way that all of South Asia unifies into one government in our lifetimes. Yeah. <laughs> like, let alone this AI technology. Let's look at the geopolitical situation. Yeah, and like they're... 
hovercraft and all this stuff and like come on guys you're saying this in 2060 maybe there will be hovercraft in 2060 but there's not going to be hovercraft aren't going to be so ubiquitous that poor rice farmers in south asia are like replacing their their uh their trucks with them and stuff yeah like or it was the it was the all the boats in in like was like cambodia yeah or something yeah indonesia like somewhere in there it's it's vague about specifically where this is taking place it's definitely it's just southeast asia. it's just south asia <laughs> southeast asia is all it's like kind of referred to as we're at war with pan asia we've always been at war with pan asia right um but yeah, yeah so the, you would so all the like if you describe this movie to me it's definitely like the type of thing that would be right up my alley because i love discussion of ai and like when does ai become so self-aware and sentient that it it qualifies as human like you know is can a machine that in every other way acts like a human and and feel emotions have a soul stuff like that i love that kind of stuff i eat up that stuff it's one of one of the reasons cyberpunk is like one of my all-time favorite genres but who boy there are some heavy-handed uh the, this movie is some serious <laughs> pro pro ai um propaganda here yeah it's but, like, but, but even like all the the like um like the the uh messaging and stuff and this is very heavy-handed i feel like um mm-hmm. You know, and like the, the there's like this. Well, I don't want to get too much into spoilers, but yeah, there there is one thing in particular. I'm like, well, that that seems a like a lot. Um, so, <laughs> so I was just thinking about there. There's some weird like human affectations that the robots have, like when they're like charging or resting or whatever. They they resemble sleeping humans. Like they'll even like toss and turn a little bit in their sleep which makes no sense there's one scene where a robot is watching robot porn yeah that one was i was like really <laughs> the 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 robots like sort of acting like asleep humans makes sense to me when you consider that they were supposed to be like servants you know and like it just to make people more comfortable around them yeah so that that makes sense to me when when you know they're supposed to be doing all the like the intention of them was that they were going to be used for all the menial labor and, um, you know, repetitive tasks, things like that. You want, you know, if they're supposed to just exist in the workforce in this way, you want people to be comfortable around them, which is why they have faces. Some of them have faces. Some of them have faces. Uh, and they call those ones specifically, or... Er, synth? or not synths they had a word synthicants or something like that something like that the ones that specifically have a human face yeah uh, had they had a special word for them otherwise there's ones that just have like robot heads yeah well you gotta have i mean if you're gonna pay to have ken watanabe be a robot in your movie you're gonna put his face on it they still like all the robots are clearly like a guy in a suit with a robot head yeah (laughs) or like the ones with human faces have like you know some green screen like turtleneck on so they can replace the yeah but like i said since you know the whole point the back of the, head. the whole point in world like, in this world of these ai robots was that they would be in the workforce and, and whatnot it makes sense that you you have them sort of act like humans in that way just so people are more comfortable around. yeah you know and i'm like i get that but the robot watching robot porn yeah that one was like okay guys uh so yeah i mean it's it's a pretty decent movie um it's it's refreshing to see like a movie that's like an original concept and not you know some adaptation or some derivative yeah yeah that was like another you know movie that's part of a series yeah that that i did really like and like i said like the the world building, well, there's some stuff that I feel like they could have elaborated on a little more thoroughly. 
one thing in particular. One thing in particular that's very important to the plot. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like they could have elaborated on further, but um, world building is pretty well done. Um, the art direction is very well done. Um, you know, like I, I will nitpick the equipment that the U.S. Army was using. Like, I get, I okay, I get if you're like raiding. This isn't a spoiler. This is like for one of the first things in the movie. Like, I get if you're like raiding a robot place. There's a decent chance the robots have like built-in night vision or whatever, but they still have human allies. Maybe use night vision goggles instead of white lights on your guns. Yeah, flashlights. Like that's that seemed really odd for like this like black ops team. Yeah. To, like also the guns all seemed very cumbersome. Yeah. Well, all you know what the, the th- <laughs> what's like they they were all too I, big, I feel bulky. like. Like, maybe they were like, you know what? We don't need... We'll just use flashlights, considering that we have this, like, laser from space just following right behind us everywhere we go. <laughs> yeah, like, I was like, we're like, what's it doing? Like, scanning, I guess? But, we're like, but does it need to be doing it in the visual spectrum? Yeah, like, you, you know... Could it not be an IR laser? See, that's why I'm wondering if... Because, like, you know, anyone sees this thing fly over and they go, oh, well, the Americans are coming. Like, they, maybe they don't feel like they need to be, like, stealthy. Also, <laughs> also the space station, they, like, they call it a space station or whatever, but it it's um this, like, platform that, they, that the U.S. built in their war against the AI because it's, like, out of reach, you know, so they can just, like, be up there and untouchable, except that we have missiles now that can fire up into space and take out satellites and this thing does not look like it's that high up especially yeah. once they well i'm not gonna say what they do but there, there, there's a scene where you it, it scales it mm-hmm. pretty thoroughly for you and you go oh i now have a sense of how big this thing is now suddenly i realize it's really not that far up there yeah like, I, I was always wondering if it was coming down into the atmosphere and then going back up higher. They never show it that high, though. Right, but like, like it's always from the ground. It's like right there. It's like a helicarrier. It's, yeah, but then know? there's shots where they show it. it. Looks like it's in space. Yeah, from like the close. It's, it's like it, it might be inconsistent scaling. I mean, okay, so maybe maybe like Cambodia or whatever doesn't currently have missiles that can fire up into low Earth orbit and take out satellites or whatever. But I feel like in this war, that would not be something difficult for them to accomplish, right. considering this is like the one advantage America has over them. Yeah. Anyway, let's. Uh, we're starting to hedge into spoiler territory, so let's throw up a spoiler warning here. Yeah. Uh. So the the uh. Gosh, what, like, what do you even want to start with? All right, so the basic plot is in the very near future. There's some really advanced AI. So I think there's and a, I think there's like a divergence. You know how like in Fallout, there's like a point in time where like mm-hmm. their you, their timeline becomes different. Yeah, because it does open up with like those old like it looks like from the fifties like comp- robots will in the future and it it looks like. Except we've it, had like except it looks like all the stuff they said robots would be doing to like help around your house and stuff came true came true right so it looks it looks like we've had robots a lot sooner anyway some defense AI detonates an atomic weapon in Los Angeles presumably whopper I, it's unclear yeah I don't know um and thus the western world all decide ai bad we will destroy all ai and then asia's like we like ai so all the ai is welcome here and so we're we're told it's the west but we only see america yeah which is part of why i think might have at some point there might have been supposed to be u.n coalition forces well considering like they all wear these blue like they wear blue and white vests or like there's these guys like blue vests and white helmets and yeah 
And I'm like, that like, looks like you win. The Americans... These giant, massive, like... Oh, just bumped the mic there. Super heavy 40k tanks with that are all blue and white. Yeah, these, like, land battleships, like something out of Ogre. Except that in Ogre, it was the AI, again. Like, the, the Ogres were themselves the AI that nuked humanity. Right. Um... So anyway, so, so onto that, the I'm AI like, nuked humanity. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, America goes to war against the AI. The AI is all hiding out in Asia. The Asian government, the the government of Pan Asia or whatever, is you know helping the robots. And so there's just all these like. I, I mean, honestly, they'd be war crimes if... <laughs> if they were people? If they were people... Well, because there's a lot of humans getting caught up in the crossfire, too. There's yeah. a lot of war crime going on in this movie. And the it took them, like, America, like, ten years where they build this giant... It definitely feels like a very heavy-handed, um, like, allegory for uh, Vietnam. Yeah. And... We built this giant space station called Nomad, and it like scans the land for robots. I guess this is blue light. Everyone not, knows it's always there. Not clear what the blue light is accomplishing. It's um, well, it seems to scan, and then it narrows down to a spot, and that's its target designation. But then it'll it launches like, a nuke. But it'll narrow down to a spot and then expand back out again. Yeah, I don't know. It launches a nuke from orbit, though. Yeah, always nukes. All the tactical nukes, all over this. Like, and I'm, I, like, I'm surprised like, the rest of the world is okay with America just ten, dropping nukes all over Asia. I mean, they're like very low yield nukes, but still. And it's like that. that so there's like that first blast, or and it's like looking at it like, was that supposed to be a nuke or something? Because like it wasn't very big, right? But we know they're nukes because they're they're irradiated zones afterwards. People have to go in in protective. Suits. Yeah, which by the way, that nuke that went off at the beginning of the movie, it wouldn't be that hot. <laughs> that, that many years it was like later, seven years, seven later. years later, it would not be that hot anymore. Right, but we, still, we have much cleaner warheads. That's that's how we know that they're atomic weapons because yeah, they're irradi- become the, the blast zones become irradiated. But we're like, why though? <laughs> For one thing, with like why nukes? Um, uh, but for another, it's like. I don't know there's just a lot of issues to have with the nukes. They they don't come in like straight down. The yeah. missiles don't come in straight down. Like, they come in like down and then go out laterally and then like yeah they like, on the side. They drop really like sense. pointing down from the space station and then like come down to like a quarter mile off the ground and then like turn and and like fly nap of the earth until they hit their target. I guess for right. reasons. Well, there's this one part where like they they raid this underground facility and then you see the nuke come in on th- from the side. I'm like, but it's an underground facility. Why wouldn't it go down? Well, it f- penetrate. It, it like flew through the, the like hangar bay of the facility. <laughs> All right, well. But yeah, the, uh, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. They would definitely launch those sideways in or cause they're in orbit. They would launch them sideways out of nomad. And then when they're over the target, they would drop down straight on top of them. Right. Because that would be the least likely chance of them being intercepted. I mean, if from that orbit, they're going to penetrate. <laughs> yeah. Gonna... Like, and, well, that's that's another thing, too. Like, if you are going to drop nukes from orbit, you don't even need to drop a nuke. You can get a similar... You can get a similar kinetic result by just dropping a solid bar of tungsten onto them. And it'd be cheaper, bro. And it'd be cheaper. And you wouldn't leave radiation... All over the place. But then they wouldn't have been able to blow up Nomad by detonating a nuke in the cradle. They could have like made it a railgun or something and be like, oh, we're going to use the magnets to rip it apart. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff they could have done. So the A lot of stuff I would have done differently. Yeah. Well, and then also we're told by Ken Watanabe in like one line saying, oh, by the way, the bomb that went off in Los Angeles. Wasn't that, even our fault. Wasn't even our fault. That was some sort of programming error. Like, could you which, elaborate? Right, which make, is like, is a coding error. It was humans that, that caused it. And I was like, that. I want to know more about that. Because that completely changes the situation. Because up until this point, I'm like, the a- Americans are carrying out this war in a dumb way, but I'm kind of on their side here. 
the AI launched a first strike nuclear attack on Los Angeles. How am I supposed to be on the robot side in all of this? Yeah, they really want you to be on the robot side in this movie. Yeah, but I'm sitting there going... They really want you to be. They're like, oh, we're all peaceful still, Buddhist robots. But they still launched a first strike nuclear attack on L.A. So at the end of the day, I'm having a hard time being on the robot side until Ken Watanabe said that thing, and I'm like, we, that should be... The, we need to hear the rest of what he had to say. Well, he should have more to say to that. Like, please yeah. elaborate on. Oh, by the way, it was a coding error. Yeah, and I, I feel like, I feel like that's uh, a big goddamn mistake. <laughs> I feel like John David Washington's character should have been like, uh, "What? You got more information on that? Yeah. News to me. I um, need to know this proof. You, you have any sort of proof? Yeah. Um, but but no, he's like no. I'm going to, like, suddenly be on the side of the Buddhist robots. Well, because it turned out that the weapon, the secret weapon that was going to be used to destroy Nomad was uh, an android child messiah. Um, yeah. I, so I don't know. Based under- off his own child. Yeah, based off of his child. Um, because like, cause AI, AI are, are, like, scans of human brains to create the, like, the... AI that go into the robots. And so this was like a scan of an embryo that was his kid. And because his wife was the daughter of the guy who created the AI. Yeah. And he was supposed to be just like using her to get at her father. Like he because he was an an American agent. And then he fell in love with her. Yep, he he went native. But yeah, the like there's just some stuff that I was like, because when they were like the other robots, like it's a miracle, and I'm like, why though? Like just because no one has thought it prudent to. Yeah, this isn't Blade Runner 2049 where the replicants had a kid, right? Like this isn't like a robot reproduced, a human created an AI using what seems to be existing technology. Just made it in a smaller package. Yeah, I mean, the fact that it can control technology is impressive. They don't explain how she gave it that capability. Just, she's really smart and put that capability in him. Right, her, and, the, and her. her. I thought it was a boy until they started calling it a girl. Very androgynous child. Yeah, it doesn't help that it's got a shaved head. Yeah, that's true. Um, and, and is like eight-ish? Yeah, seven, eight. Seven or eight. Oh, yeah, I guess like if that. it's supposed to be seven years later. Yeah. And the robot's aging somehow. Maybe I don't know. I, I guess it. Yeah, because it shows her working on the like the fetus sized robot in in like a Death Stranding jar. Yeah, yeah, it was weird. <laughs> there's a lot of questions we have about this movie, about the plot of this movie. Yeah, there's a lot that you just guess supposed to just go okay. A lot of hand waving. There's a lot of hand waving in this movie. Uh, yeah. Uh, to me, my favorite character was was actually uh that Colonel, um. Played by uh, what's her name from West Wing, <laughs> the the one who's like the assistant to the, or yeah. she was she was the press secretary, right? Yeah, in, in West, West Wing, Wing, where she plays this colonel on this, and she's like really like gung ho. Yeah. Uh. And then Sturgill Simpson. Yeah. We're sitting there watching. I was like, God, that guy's familiar, and I'm like, Oh, it's Sturgill Simpson. <laughs> You mean Sturgill Simpson, who wrote The Dead Don't Die, the theme song for The Dead Don't Die? Yes, that's Sturgill Simpson. Okay. Theme song for the movie, yeah. That's uh, that's another... Um, Alice and Janney. Yeah. Uh, that's another movie we reviewed, and you should go check out that review. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. There, there's a lot about... Like, it was a really... Like, it was a cool movie to watch. The art direction was really good. Like you said, the, like, the robot messiah thing was like really heavy-handed like a lot of that like um sort of uh like messaging was really heavy-handed and there's a lot of hand waving in the plot but it was a cool movie to watch yeah and uh like I said, it's a it's a lot of pro ai propaganda so i'm i wonder if it was actually written by uh chat gpt 
I'm still not entirely on the robot's side. Yeah. In this, because... Like... So it, it only makes sense from the American point of view if all AI have, like... They're, they're all unified as one thing. Right? Like, if... If a computer went rogue and attacked America, I would not blame my Roomba. But that's the way they were going about it. Like, all... I. But I guess there's, like, one person that, like, created all the AI. Yeah. Um, Is the way they they have it. And like, all the other robots are, like, derivative of that technology or something. Yeah. I don't really know. Again, like, they, they don't really explain that i feel like that would be an important distinction to be made you know i I don't know unless they're just like oh all ai has the capability of nuking los angeles so yeah but all yeah i mean all AI in the the same way that all humans have the capability of nuking los angeles like right if yeah if you had access to the nukes i guess anyone could do it anyone could turn the key to do it yeah or any two people anyway yeah, but yeah, like none of the AI, rest of the AI seem inclined to do it. But you'd think there would have been investigations to how it happened, and then if they would have discovered a coding error, I don't know. It the U.S. comes off as pretty stupid in this movie in a lot of ways. Yeah, uh, but that's part of the heavy-handed messaging. They would definitely would not be going into this war not wearing camo. It might not be the correct camo for the environment, but the U.S. Army would show up wearing camo. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Anyway. And probably using nods during a nighttime infiltration. Not big old bright flashlights for all the world to see. We have no confirmation that the AI that the robots actually see in any like infrared or anything. Yeah. But also there are human confederates of the AI, so at least hide yourself from them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of you see, there's a lot of things that like from the get go we were both like, What? Uh but uh, unfortunately, like while I would love to see a lot more uh, unique and novel science fiction in theaters, I feel like this movie's probably not doing great. There were like four people in the theater when we went to see it. Now, to be fair, we were seeing the first uh, matinee showing of the day on a Sunday, but there was also about a thousand kids in the lobby to see Paw Patrol, so... Yeah. It was uh, pretty packed for Paw Patrol. Uh, anyway, what's next? So what's next, movie? next movie is where did it, there it is release calendar. Um, mm-hmm. we're we're in the. We're in that in October now, which means uh, that's going to be a bunch of horror movies. Well, we might see Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah. Got someone who wants to see it. No um, one's all excited about this Taylor Swift The Eras Tour in theater. Mm, yep. I, I'm, I'm a Swifty. Sure am. Uh, there was something I saw. Oh, Killers of the Flower Moon. That movie looks really good. I feel like it's gonna be upsetting, but what movie was that's that? That's that Martin Scorsese movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, about the that Indian tribe getting their land taken because there's oil on it. Yeah. There, but I'm trying to remember. I thought there was something in a. October. When's that um, Taika Waititi movie coming out? The soccer one. Uh, it's called like Next Goal Wins or something like that. Uh, 
I don't remember. Oh, it's November 17th. Okay. Same day is The Hunger Games. Which actually looks like a pretty good movie. This new Hunger yeah, Games. Yeah, that looks better than the other ones. And I'm going to be honest, I don't really care for any of the other Hunger Games movies. No. The only reason I've I seen bo- all of them, but I don't... The only reason I bothered seeing them is because my friend's girlfriend was all into it. And uh, we just sort of got drug along. Yeah, Napoleon. Oh, Napoleon mm-hmm. looks great. You know, we're always we're always game for a good biopic, a, a good biopic. Yeah. Um. So, by the way, we saw this. We saw the trailer for the Marvels in there. We were both like, "Did this movie come out already?" I, th- I thought it'd come out. And I just missed it. But... Did it come out? Like, was it? Did its scheduled day get pushed back because of the the uh, Actors Guild strike? That could have. That could be. Um, which they're still striking. True, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdoms coming out in December. Dude, there was a rumor that Warner Brothers lost all the footage for that movie, and so that's and they weren't gonna release it. And then the next day, I saw a trailer saying it's like it's finally coming out. Yeah. Ferrari. Oh, that's that new Adam Driver where he's playing. Uh, the titular guy. Yeah. Yeah, Enzo Ferrari. Um, God, things got pushed around like Dune got pushed somewhere, right? To next year. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're going to be seeing The Boy and the Heron. Heron? Heron? How do you pronounce that word? What movie? That's that new Ghibli movie. Oh, yeah, The blo- Boy and the Heron. Heron? Heron? I don't know. Is it a... Japanese word? Yeah, I think it's based off a Japanese novel. But like her- heron, is that a heron? Is that a Japanese word? I I don't know. Do you you took you took Japanese in high school, so like you're my resident Japanese expert. Right. I I'm obviously fluent from You're at least as fluent in Japanese as I am in German. One year of ja- one year of Japanese. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's a. <laughs> it's Miyazaki's like third final movie. <laughs> he, he's like the. Um... <sighs> Shoot, what was that? That punk band that had like all those farewell tours. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Of. Yeah, the, was that, was that the Misfits? No. Uh, no, it wasn't the Misfits. I don't. Remember. Yeah, I don't hear. Yeah. Anyway. Um. Yeah, the only thing Miyazaki apparently is able to quit doing is raising a family. Yeah. Apparently his son is, like, kind of bitter about what an absent father he was <laughs> growing up. Because yeah. he was always so engrossed at his work. And then his son made that, um... That, uh... Tales Ariety. of the Secret World of wasn't that the Secret World of Variety? No, no, he did the um. Oh man, what's that fantasy series? Sci-Fi Channel did a mini series on it. Um, Earthsea, yeah. Oh, he did oh, like oh. Tales of Earthsea, and it it bombed, and it's considered like the worst thing to ever come out of Studio Ghibli by far. Like, and. All like Miyazaki say about is like, well, I'm proud my son managed to finish a movie or something like that. Yeah, it's a Goro Miyazaki. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What was I think? Oh, no, it was someone else. It was someone. It was like one of the lead animators or something from from Studio Ghibli. Like went off and did another. Oh. A movie for like yeah. a similar style, but for another it looked, company. It looked like a Ghibli movie, and it bombed bad because it didn't have that charm to it. We saw it in theater. Yeah, I don't was remember it, what it was called. Wasn't it something with like this, like magic? Some like girl gets teleported to like some magic school or something. Yeah, that's like up in the sky or something. Yeah, that's all I remember. That's all I really remember, yeah. Anyway. Um, 
So yeah, it sounds it sounds like a lot of the movies though that we were wanting to see this year are now pushed to next year because of the uh, SAG after strike primarily, from what I understand, because um, the actors can't do any of the promotional stuff. Like they can't go on the talk shows and talk about it, or do the the interviews with like with, you know where they they do like forty different like news outlets will come and interview the actors over the course of a day. Yeah. And the just, actors like, just sit in that chair and like different people come right. through. Yeah. So uh since the actors can't do any of that stuff while the, while SAG after is on strike, uh I saw one of those it was for the promotion of the last Jumanji movie and Kevin Hart like falls asleep. Yeah, because it was like at the end of the day. It was like the end of the day. And you can see because they were doing it outside and you can see the progression of like where the sun is and it's like this nighttime or evening one and Kevin Hart's just asleep during it. Yeah. Uh, But anyway, so hopefully, you know, there's still enough movies coming out to keep us busy. It doesn't sound like it. It sounds like we're seeing maybe two movies in October and maybe one each in November and December. Yeah. Napoleon's in November, right? Or is that in October? It's in November. Okay. Tell me Napoleon's going to be hella long. Oh, I'm sure it's... It it better be, because there's no way that that's a halfway decent biopic if it's not three hours long. Let's see. Napoleon? Two hours and 38 minutes. Okay, that's pretty good. I feel like it could be longer. I feel like they're just going to brush over his failure in Africa, though. Probably. <laughs> I feel like they're going to be like, ah, da, 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 da. we don't have to talk about that. <sighs> Napoleon was a perfect military commander. Ridley Scott's so old. He's still making movies. And he's, what, 90... Or, what, 80... Uh, he looks, I can't math right now. He looks pretty good for his age, though. Well, that picture is no, no, not no. a recent picture. There was a... Um... In that sizzle reel, wasn't there wasn't one of those shots from him making Napoleon? That IMDb sizzle reel thing going on there? Uh, I don't know. Anyway. So. Uh, I guess that's all we have. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, that's what we got coming up. If any of that sounds of interest to you, come back and check that out later. Also, go check out our other reviews that we posted. What was our last review, Nolan? The Haunted Mansion. Has it been that long? It's been that long. Oh, we didn't do one for... Yeah, we we didn't do one for... Uh... It's... God, it's a long day. Um, The Equalizer 3. Oh. It's all right. It's all right. Not as good as the first one. It's. I was kind of bored through most of it, I'm being honest. Uh, anyway... So, yeah, The Haunted Mansion was the last one we did. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, so, yeah, come back and check out those upcoming reviews, and uh, hopefully the writer strike doesn't result in a shitload of really bad or rushed movies or just, like, a dry spell of movies coming up. And the annoying thing is, too, that, like, the the writers guild's biggest com- like issue with that had to do with tv show writers but the whole guild has to go on strike yeah so uh but anyway so you got anything else yeah all right cool until next time thanks for listening bye toodles 